Okay, we're done with the first and second. Now, in, we are now on the third bullet or third, which is the end behavior. So how do we find the end behavior? So we need the following. We need the degree. We need the sign of the leading coefficient. And we need the turning points before we find out and illustrate the, the, the end behavior of the polynomial function you just created. Okay. So again, the degree is 5. That's the highest exponent in the given polynomial that you created. Okay, the degree is 5. Here, it is 5. Now, sign of the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient is the numerical coefficient of the leading term is 1. So that's positive. So positive. Sir, uh, how about the turning points? How do we find the turning points? Bakit nagkaroon po ng 4? Remember that uh, the polynomial, the polynomial of x or of a given polynomial in variable x has this form a raised to x minus one, uh, n a raised to x uh, a x raised to n plus we have a sub n minus one of x raised to n minus one. So meaning to say decreasing n then we have n minus 1. If this is 5, this will be 5 minus 1, that's 4. So now, n here, the formula for turning point, we have n minus 1. n here is referring to the degree or to the exponent, to the highest exponent. So therefore, the highest exponent is 5. 5 minus 1 will be 4. So the turning point, every time you find, uh, you look for the turning point, you just subtract 1. Okay, so that's how we do it. Always subtract one. So if we have six, the turning point will be five. If we have seven, the turning point will be six. Okay, so now sir, how about the end behavior? How do we uh, determine uh, the end behavior? So look, a while ago, we have the following. We have the degree and we have the sign of the leading coefficient. It has something to do with the end behavior. And uh, of course, uh, it's very helpful if we have that. Okay, take note of this. Degree, if the degree is odd, look, five here is an odd number. So if the degree is odd and the sign of the leading coefficient is positive and positive, the end behavior or the behavior of the graph looks like this. So it falls to the left, meaning to say the, the, the other end of the arrow or the other end of the graph falls to the left and then it will rise to right, something like that. Okay? Falls to left, rises to right. Or... Uh, other uh, illustration of this one would be like this. So like that, and then here we have here. So something like this. So something like that. Falls to left, rises to right. That's how we illustrate. Okay? So sir, how about if the degree, degree is odd, but the sign of the leading coefficient, but the sign and the sign of the leading coefficient or the sign of the leading term is negative. So the other way around, it will be like this. So it falls to the right, but it rises to left. Okay. Something like that. Or, or it can be like this when we illustrate. So rises to Again, rises to left, it rises to left, and then it falls to your right. Okay, to the right, something like that. Pababa so, yung isa dito sa kanan, pataas yung isang end ng graph sa kaliwa. That is kapag add. Let's say, for example, add ito, 5 pero 
nakalagay dito, negative x raised to the fifth power. So, ito yung magiging illustration natin yan. So, pabaliktaran lang. Sir, what if it is even? Okay. Sir, what is what if if the degree is even? Take note of this one. What if the degree is even and positive? If the degree is even and positive, it will look like this. So, both rises to both rises to or both left and right rises. Okay. So, both ends rises. Okay. Or rises to left, rises to right. Okay. How about if the degree is even, meaning to say the exponent is even. What are even exponents? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on. 12, 14. So that's it. So even and negative. The sign of the leading coefficient. The sign of the leading coefficient is negative. So even and negative, it will be a parabola that opens downward. So both falls, uh, the both end falls. Okay. Or both ends or uh, the uh, left end of the graph falls here to the left and then the other end falls to the right. So both uh, ends of the graph is pointing downward. Okay. That's how we illustrate. Okay. Are we clear on this one? So now uh, that's how we uh, solve or find out the end behavior of the graph of a polynomial. So let's move on now to the fourth part of our the fourth part of our performance task. So in the fourth part of our performance task, real zeros of polynomial function. Real zeros, meaning to say, not imaginary, the word is real. But of course, since kayo naman ang nagbibigay ng inyong zeros, ito yung zeros natin, di ba? Wala naman kayong imaginary nilagay dyan. Walang imaginary nilagay dito in this case, in Jerome. So, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2, 3. That, uh, these are the zeros. So, sir, paano natin ilalagay si interval? So, take note. Take note po ah, paano po natin sir ilalagay si interval dyan? Ngayon, palitin natin konti para makita natin. So, notice that here, kung isusulat natin yung mga zeros nyo dito, we're going to write the zeros, the smallest number to your left will be negative 2. Tama? Negative 2. Then we have negative 1. And then we have here uh, 1. And then we have 2. And we have 3. So, inarrange ko lang po ito. I just arrange this one from the smallest integer down to the biggest integer. So, negative 2 is the smallest, followed by negative 1, 1, 2, 3. So, now... So, sa paglagay ng interval, kung igagraph natin to, kung halimbawa, ito po yung ating partition plane, di ba po dito sa kaliwa, ito po yung kaliwa natin, that's negative infinite. Negative infinite, ito naman po sa, sa kanan po natin, so let's move a little bit, ito naman sa kanan natin, this is positive infinity. Okay, that's positive infinity sa x-axis natin. Okay. So, this is y-axis. And then, the other one is the x-axis. Itong pahiga. Okay. So, observe. Nandito si negative 2. Then, we have your negative 1. 0 yung gitna. We have 1, 2, then we have 3. So, kung observe natin, ang mga interval natin dito, Ang nasa kaliwa, pinakakaliwang part na interval, n, will be negative infinity. Okay? 
Tama? Ano yung boundary dito? Ang uh, boundary dito sa pinakakaliwa ay negative infinity. Ang boundary na susunod is negative 2. Okay, yan muna. Okay? So, that's it. Next. The second, now, ang second portion, ito yung nahati kasi yan sa portion na to. Una, ito po. Okay, ibahin natin yung kulay. Okay. So, nahati yan. Ito po, ang pagkakahati ng mga boundary. Ayan. First, I write this as letter A. Ito yung B. So, yung B natin, ang boundary natin dyan is negative 2 tapos negative 1. Ayan. So, next, ang kasunod na boundary ay negative 1 saka 1. Ayan na, si C. Sa pagitan, sa pagitan ni negative 1 saka ni 1. So, negative 1 at saka 1. Okay. Next, eto, meron pa, nandyan, nakalagay. 1 and 2. So, sa pagitan ni 1 saka ni 2. Yan, yung mga boundary natin. And then, we have 2, 3. Ito po. Ito yung boundary sa left na. Ito naman yung boundary sa right. 2, 3. And then, pinakahuli, itong 3 at saka yung positive infinity. 3 at saka positive infinity. Okay. So now, sir, ano po yung mga test point namin dito? Sa pagitan ni nito, sa first interval natin, look at the first interval, negative infinity and negative 2. Sa pagitan niyan, di ba may kasunod na dito negative 3? So pwede natin kunin yun, test point kung kukunin negative 3. Sir, pwede po ba si negative 4? Yes. Negative 4 can be a test point. Okay. Dito, sa negative, one, uh, negative 2 and negative 1, sa pagitan niyan, ano sa pagitan niyan? Itong dalawa, pwede po tayong kumuha ng decimal point. Di ba po? Bago po mag-negative 2, pwede si 1.5. So, negative 1.5. Okay? Next, sa negative 1 at saka 1, sa pagitan niyan, pwede may 0. So, pwede natin kunin si 0 as our a test point. Sir, pwede po ba ang 0.5? Yes. Pwede po yun. Negative 0.5. Pwede rin. So, 1 and 2 naman. Dito sa 1 and 2, pwede si 1.5. Positive 1.5. Of course, hindi natin isasama si boundary. Okay? Between 1 and 2 lang. Sa pagitan lang, boundary nga yun. Sa gitna, itong nasa gitna nito, yun ang kukunin natin. Kaya 1.5. So, Pagitan ni 1 and 2, pwede si 1.5, pwede si 1.4, 1.2, 1.1. Okay. Then next, 2 and 3, pwede natin 2.5 na lang ilagay natin. 2.5. Okay. Then 3, tapos positive infinity kasi lahat na yung papunta dito. Okay. 3 and positive infinity. So meaning to say, pwede si 4, pwede si 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on. But of course, hindi ko kukunin yung malaking number. 4 na lang, pinakamalapit. Okay, so clear tayo sa test point na second column. Next, value of P of X. Ang susunod na gagawin natin, isasubstitute natin ito. Okay, isasubstitute natin yan dito po sa polynomial function na mayroon kayo. So here, ang polynomial function natin, so the polynomial function that we have, i-rewrite ko lang dito, P of X is equal to so, let me use another color. Let me use blue. So, P of X is equal to X raised to the fifth power minus 3X to the fourth and then minus 3X cubed minus 3X cubed plus 9X squared plus 2X Minus 6. Ayan. Nare-write natin dyan. So, ang gagawin natin, we go back, we go back to our uh, third column of this table. So, value of P of X. Meaning to say, ipapalit natin lahat ng test point na yun para makuha natin to. You have your calculator. What you're going to do is just use your calculator. So, isample ko lang po. Isa lang ang isasample ko and the rest you will do it on your own. So, 
P of negative 3 ang ipapalit ko. Ayan. So, lahat ng x dito, papalitan ko ng negative 3. So, negative 3 raised to the fifth power. Ito po yun. Ito po yun. Okay. Itong part na ito. Ayan, ang unang pinalitan natin yung x doon. Then, negative 3 times. So, yung x papalitan ulit ng value na negative 3 raised to the fourth power. K minus 3 times negative 3 raised to the third plus 9x or in the 9x, papalitan natin yung x ng negative 3. So, again, this is 9 times negative 3 raised to the second power. Okay, remove a little bit. Okay, now, plus 2, 2 times negative 3. Palitan ulit yung x ng negative 3 and then minus 6. So, walang ipapalit na doon. So, now, we have here, so negative 3 raised to the fifth power. So, you can use your calculator. Negative 3 raised to the fifth power will be negative 243. So, negative 243. And then, minus negative 3. So, remember that is negative 3 times negative 3 raised to the fourth power. Negative 3 raised to the fourth power will be, dapat naka-enclose po yan. Naka-enclose po yun ha. Ginawa nyo sa calculator. Naka-enclose sa parenthesis bago nyo erase sa 4 para hindi kayo magkamali because that is positive 81. Okay? So, next, we have 3 raised to negative 3. Again, enclose nyo po ulit. Negative 3, enclosed in parentheses, raised to the third power, that is negative 27. Otherwise, kapag di nyo nilagay sa, uh, sa parentheses, may pagkakataon na magkamali po kayo. Okay, plus 9. Negative 3, 3 raised to the second power, magiging positive 9 na po yun. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Then, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Then, minus 6. Then, we continue. So we have negative 243 minus 81 times negative 3. That's negative 243 ulit. And then this will be positive 81. Negative times negative is positive. Positive 81. This is positive 81. 9 times 9 is 81. Then this will be negative 12. So combine. Combine natin lahat ng negative. So, use your calculator if you cannot do it manually. Negative 243 uh, plus negative 243 plus negative 12 equals negative 499. Okay, negative 499. Then we have here, yung positive naman, plus 162. Okay, then saka tayo mag-subtract because opposite sign. Ito pa negative, ito positive. So, subtract the smallest number. So, 499 minus 162 equals 337. 337, pero ang sign ng mas malaking number ay negative. So, kaya negative ito. So, meaning to say, this will be the value here. Negative 337. That's the value. Now, since it is, what is the sign? The sign is negative. Okay. Now, since the sign is negative, it is below. Okay. Below po yan. Below po yung ating turning point. Later, you will understand. Now, uh, then, you do the same. Sa-substitute nyo rin po itong mga to. Okay po? Substitute that. So, completoy natin if you want. Uh, we can complete that. But, since this is just a sample, you can do it your own. Gawin nyo po ito. Sarili nyo na po uh, ang gagawin na pag-plot po nito or pag-substitute. Okay. Sign is negative. 
So sir, what if the sign is positive? Ang ilalagay po natin is above. Kapag naging positive. Let's say zero. Ipalit natin si zero. So let's do that. P of zero is equal to. So palit natin dito. Zero raised to the fifth power. Minus three times zero raised to the fourth power. Then we have. Uh, excuse me. <coughs> we have negative three times uh, zero raised to the third power plus nine times zero raised to the second power plus two times zero, then minus six. So remember, zero na po ito, zero na rin ito, zero na rin po ito, zero rin ito, zero to. So negative six agad. So negative six, ang value ng P of X na rin dito. The sign is negative, so that is below. So, ganyan po ang pag-compute po niya. Okay po? So, malinaw. Malinaw po yun na ganyan ang pagkuha natin sa test form.